Yeah, so right here we have that new Rooster song, which that is gonna make us get into corner number one with way more speed than before. And we have a little repave right there in, in, in next to corner number one. And then 9, 10, 11 is repaved as long as 12. And I'm leaving the carousel from 18 to 19. Those are the repaved sections. Those areas have a significantly more amount of grip than what they've had there in the past. It's gonna help the tire wear just a little bit, um, but this definitely seems like one of those racetracks that's very technical and you gotta be hustling though the whole time. I talked about executing the race. Here is our race analysis, 46 laps, just over 150 miles. The stage breakdown, stage one is 14 laps. Stage two and the final stage, both 16 laps. Most everyone you talk to says we'll pit somewhere toward the end of stage two. They can go the distance from there. As you see, our fuel window is just north of 20 laps in today's race. We've heard from Shane Van Gisbergen. and let's meet now some of the other drivers that make up our international flair in this afternoon's race. I'm Alex LeBay, I'm from St. Albert, Quebec, Canada, and I'm from the NASCAR Canada Series. Hello, my name is Daniel Kviat. I was racing in Formula One uh, for six seasons. Hi, I'm Shane Van Gisbergen. I'm from Auckland in New Zealand, and uh, I've pretty much driven everything, I guess. Supercars mainly is the last 15 years or so, but rally, speedway, quad bikes, everything pretty much. My name is Ed Jones. I'm a British racing driver, born and raised in Dubai. Um, I've raced in IndyCar for quite a few years. This is my first uh, NASCAR Xfinity Championship race, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Coda's an awesome track. I'm ready to get going here soon. Ed Jones has raced right here at Circuit of the Americas, did so in the Craftsman Truck Series a season ago. I love when we get some outsiders that come in and compete, and you can appreciate this more than anyone, Daniel. Of course, Adam. You know, you, I only I get goosebumps when I when I get to you know to hear all these different drivers from different countries, from different cultures. Now I understand why you guys can't understand my English sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I don't feel I don't feel that bad anymore when I can I can have my international friends right here with us. What I like is is they get the first dose of NASCAR. You know what I mean? Like this is like it's so different than any other form of racing around the world. High contact, bumping and banging, moving each other around, uh, different lingos than what they're used to. Like the the learning experience is more than just driving the car around the racetrack. It's the culture, as you said, Daniel, of of how NASCAR makes things work and how the teams want to communicate with you in such a different way, and then how the drivers race. I mean, it is hard, aggressive, full contact racing. Pacing the field today here at Coda, the Toyota GR Supra. I want to confirm those drivers that went to the back. For Kyle Larson, had a brake problem after qualifying on the pole. For Shelton Creed, throttle linkage. For Gibbs, it was an alternator and a battery in the same. For John Hunter Nemechek, had the problem yesterday during practice. He did qualify, but the changes they made required them to start their day at the rear. And here you see the host of drivers that have a long way to go once the green flag goes in the air. And there's some fast ones there. You, know, you, you look at quite a few of those cars are gonna have some speed come through it. Most notably, probably Kyle Larson, Ty Gibbs. You're know, probably the two that are, I look to come through the field the fastest, along with some others there. I love listening to Larson on race day. He does the interview and he said, yeah, actually I'm, kind of excited about coming from the rear. And, and I have to admit, when I saw the post earlier today that they were going to have to fall to the back, I was like, this is really good for us. Then I heard about Ty Gibbs. I'm like, the hits just keep on coming. You know, it's, it's, sorry, Joey, but he's definitely a bit excited. But something that is very important is that these guys, they have a speed, but they have to make sure that they make it to the front in one piece. They have to do that because if they get to the front with damage, it won't be, it won't be as good. Time to make it happen in Austin, Texas, in the restart zone, and they explode off at of turn 20 and up the hill to turn one. Van Gisbergen grabs the point. Yeah, I don't think AJ was ready for him to go that early in the restart zone. When he jumped off, he, he got a big lead there, Van Gisbergen. Yeah, that was a great job from Shane right there with a good jump. Like you mentioned, Joey, I, I don't think that AJ was ready to, to go to a troll that early, but uh, there they go. 81 of Chandler Smith settles in in second between the two colleague cars. 
And going through to going through the S's here too wide. Very, very tricky. Lots of bumping and banging throughout that. Got to stay within the track limits. You know, that's something so difficult to do, guys, you know, to stay on the track limits when you're following somebody. Because if that somebody in front of you goes too, too hard into, into the track limits, sometimes you're just following a, a, alone. So you have to just be cautious of that. I was watching you two qualify earlier today with all your fellow competitors, and it just amazes me. The level of concentration it takes to run this place, change for second. A.J. Allmendinger inside of the 81 of Chandler Smith at turn 11. He has a big passing zone down there. It's all about getting off turns eight and nine, getting that momentum through 10 to make the heavy braking pass into 11. Saw some dust back there. You will have that. Drivers <laughs> going off course. Parker Kligerman side by side with Parker Retzloff as they hit turn 12. Sam Mayer a part of that mix as well in the one. You see Chandler Smith got back ahead of AJ. AJ crossing him back over into, I call this the stadium section. I don't know what you want to call it today. Yeah, no, it's definitely the stadium <laughs> section. But uh, now you can, you can see there the, the experience of AJ. You know, the, he, he, he ruined Oh, no, oh, yeah. spins. That uh, was Sammy Smith that was right behind him in the eight. I don't know how he spun out, but he did a tremendous job keeping the wheel spinning on that thing. Not smoking him off too much, but really only losing maybe 10 spots there. That was Austin Green in the 32 that jumped around him. Second generation driver. His father, David, won the championship 1994. Yeah, here you see uh, Sammy Smith in the eight, kind of getting pushed in there by Austin Hill. Really nothing Sammy Smith could have done and, and really nothing Chandler Smith could have done either. Just everyone on top of each other into that breaking zone. And Yeah, it looks, looks to me that Sammy Smith was protecting from uh, Austin Hill and, uh, and unfortunately Chandler Smith was a victim of, of, that, uh, of that pushing and banging. Uh, luckily his car is still in one piece. Yeah, and that's a corner you want to open up and try to get a good arc for the exit of that corner. And I think Chandler thought, man, I got two or three car lengths. That's probably enough room for me to open it up. Nope, that's not enough. I can put that yeah. in the notes. Need yeah. a little bit more than two car lengths. He was running third, now 17th for Chandler Smith. He was 12th here as a rookie one season ago. Now you see this corner here, it turns eight and nine. You see the car is off in the dirt. No track limit uh, rule there. That is get as much as you want. So Evan's going to put their wheels pretty much in the dirt there. And they'll get <laughs> dirty throughout the race for sure. Leland Honeyman had to make a pass through penalty and he was too fast exiting. So a tough start for the driver from Phoenix that's fresh off a top 15 finish at his home track. Cole Custer on the move. A couple of veterans going at it right there inside of the seven of Justin Allgaier. This is our Ford performance onboard camera. Oh, you hear him hopping just a little bit down into the break zone. Such a such a game of chicken. You had to think about how fast you're going into that break zone. You're top of fourth gear, all you got. Looking at this really sharp corner side by side with the car next to you, and you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to break a little <laughs> bit later than you. <laughs> and the other one's thinking, I'll break yeah. a little later than you. Next thing you know, they're going in there too hard. Yeah, I've been in that situation where, no, 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 I'm going to break a little later, and all of a sudden, both cars overdrive the, the corner, right? Exactly. It's the battle for third. Our Toyota on board, Sage Karam, who takes the spot away from Sammy Smith. A little bit of damage on the on the right front ha uh, headlight of of, uh, of Sammy Smith, uh, Chevy Camaro. Um, but it, I don't think that's going to affect him too much. Ty Gibbs making some moves. Looks like he's... Uh, being productive in the first couple laps of the race. He's coming from the back, so is his teammate John Hunter Nemechek, but Nemechek penalized for shortcutting turn four. So a lot of adversity already for Nemechek, who, as we said, won a few weeks ago at Las Vegas. And that penalty for shortcutting, that's a pass through penalty. He'll have to roll down pit road. Top two checking out. It's Shane Van Gisbergen, and right on his tail end, teammate A.J. Allmendinger, the rest of the top five, Karam, Sammy Smith, and Cole Custer. You're watching the NASCAR Xfinity Series live from Circuit of the Americas.
If you want a racetrack to add to your bucket list, Circuit of the Americas is it. This place is outstanding. 1,500 acres, 3.4 mile road course. And when they put them on track, there's all kinds of great sights all around this layout. And while we were away, we had a spinner, Danny Kievyat from Russia. He's competed in F1, five starts right here at Coda on the F1 side of things, driving the 07 this weekend for Bobby Dodder. And he went around, stays on the lead lap, 36th right now. He lives in Monaco, and, and we were talking about that earlier, and all those fellas that are coming from overseas to race here in NASCAR. And he's got a lot of talent, had top 15 finish driving a couple of years ago for Sam Hunt on the Roval. Parker Kligerman looks good early up to fifth, Regan. Adam having a perfect start for the 48 car. Parker Kligerman moving all the way up to fifth place. As you just said, he kind of predicted this before the race. He told me that we never qualify very good here at Circuit of the Americas, but the car always races very well. One thing to keep an eye on with that 48, though, they have had trouble this weekend, much like last year getting into turn one. The front of the car wants to start hopping around on him, something they have not figured out. So as this race plays out and he gets into more braking situations, keep an eye on that. Josh? Tough start to the race for the 18 of Sheldon Creed came over the radio reporting an alternator issue. Remember, his teammates had a similar issue that forced them to go to the back at the start of the race. They're going to come down pit road next time to change the battery. So a tough break for the 18. Been a long weekend for Sheldon Creed, and you felt like this was a track where they could take advantage. Led laps here a season ago, and it's been very impressive in his career road racing. These two guys are checked out, man. They, these guys right now, are on a different zip code and uh, they're very quick. Seems to me that they're pushing each other. It's almost like Shane wants to shield a little bit, but AJ is not, let, is not let, letting him. Yeah, he definitely have <laughs> two of the best road racers that we may have ever seen and two equally matched cars right there. They're teammates, they got the same cars. It's gonna, it's gonna be a heck of a race to watch all day long. Everyone else is racing in Austin, Texas. These two have like made their way to Oklahoma City. <laughs> they have absolutely driven away. You know, earlier today, we had the Craftsman Truck Series race on FS1. Corey Heim gets the victory. Last few weeks, he's been driving for Sam Hunt Racing. This weekend, that opportunity goes to Sage Karam. And boy, is he getting it done. Was fourth last year at Road America, strong in practice, great in qualifying and delivering in the race. I see a little feet work. So important, especially with, with these Xfinity cars. I brought it up earlier with the truck arms and, and the way the rear end housing is in these things. You've got to rev match it so smooth. Uh, you mismatch the, the revs to the gear a little bit and you get that thing hopping. And the next thing you know, the whole rear end could fall out of the car is what I learned today in the truck race. <laughs> Add that to the list of things Didn't know we that had could happen. never seen before. <laughs> you know, what is impressive about uh, Karam is that uh, he's already a very good uh, road, road course driver, but his background is from IndyCar. Right. You know, IndyCar is probably the most opposite thing that you can have to an Xfinity car. Uh, those cars that have uh, sequential gearbox, they are probably a third uh, of the weight of the Xfinity car. Uh, maybe similar power, but it's completely different. So, you know, to see him being strong and, and performing in the, in the top five is, is quite impressive. You see Parker Kligerman right behind him. He kind of looks like he's running him down a little bit. You know, Parker passed Sammy Smith the lap before that, and he's starting to run down Sage as some of his, his Xfinity stats and his racing career. Those two career top five finishes mentioned the fact that he was fourth last year at Road America. That's his career best. And when he was 19 years old, he skipped his high school prom so he could go to Indy and qualify for the 500. And when qualifying was done, they were waiting for him in the garage and had a little makeshift prom right there <laughs> in Indy. So that was cool. That's awkward with a bunch of race team guys, huh? <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sure they all felt in their element, right? Was his date there at least? She okay. was. Something? She was there. Okay, yeah. all right, that makes it a little better. Her. <laughs> hey, guys, I think I saw the 18 car yep. getting pushed to the garage. Yep. Man, it's been so difficult for them coming off that Third place finish at Phoenix two weeks ago. It's fun to hear him go through the gears here. Listen to how long they're on the throttle here. It's a long straightaway, and listen to how long the braking zone is here. 
the wolf hop. I mean, that's cutting a lot of speed yes. out right there in a hurry. And you get yourself in a little bit of a trouble. You get that wheel hop there, just a little bit more of that, you're you're gone. And once star, once the wheel hop starts, it's very difficult to stop it. Yes, right? it's it's like a basketball. What yeah. does that feel like in the car? Wheel hop. Not good. It's not good, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's one of those things that you you are braking and the, the rear of the car is bouncing up and down, but at the same time, you know, you you have to get out of the brake to be able to to stop it. We've just about reached the halfway point in stage one. Teammates at the top, they've got a six and a half second advantage over third place. Van Gisbergen, Almendinger, dominant in Austin. Things can get physical on a road course. We've seen it a couple of times already today. These are teammates. Sam Mayer in the one and Justin Allgaier in the seven. Big time damage on the right front for Mayer, who in three of the four races this year has recorded a DNF after being involved in an accident. What do you make of that? I feel his pain. It's been a rough start for me, too. I get it, but <laughs> I wasn't trying like, to rub it next, in. man. <laughs> Eventually, it all, you like to think it averages out over the season. Uh, obviously, Sam's had some good race cars, and unfortunate things happen to him. This is our Celsius onboard camera riding with A.J. Allmendinger. These teammates from Colleague. Now eight seconds in front of the competition. Just remarkable what they're doing on track. Yeah, it definitely looks like one of those situations that whoever's going to be in front of the other is going to be the one that's going to have the advantage. Let's talk to Chris Rice as he is the, uh, what is he, competition director? We're going to call him team president Team now, president? president? Okay. Chris Rice, Joey Logano in the Fox booth. You got us? Yeah, guys, you got me? Yeah, we got you. You're probably uh, 
feeling pretty good up there. Your two race cars are looking spectacular out there. Uh, what are you going to do strategy-wise? That's what we were thinking here. Are you going to let them race it out, or are you going to put one on two different strategies so you're pretty much going to win either way? <laughs> Been talking to the guys on the uh, 97 and 16. We got a plan for that. We've talked about it all week. We've uh, we've set up for these road course races big time this year, and you know, having AJ for so many years, and and now having SVG, it's uh, pretty cool coming to these places. That 17's on its way, so we got to play the game right. And, uh, I think you'll see here pretty quick when we're going to play the first stage for sure. All right, we'll have to wait and watch. You told us nothing. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> I would say the orange car is probably still on a racetrack. <laughs> oh, good, man. Have a good one. Thanks. Chris Rice is the president, but to his left was the real boss. That's the owner, Matt Colley. Well, I mean, I think it's, it's a little bit obvious what they what they may do here. You know, with Van Gisbergen and Almendinger, I don't know. I mean, I, I would say as, as a driver, you'd want to stay on the same strategy with him because you want to go try to win the race. But as a team owner, you would say, man, I want to, you know, split my, my hand basically where I can maybe win two different ways. Well, but let me tell you, based on the speed that we are seeing from 97, from the from the 16, from the 19 and the 17, that I, I feel like these guys, if you put them together, they're going to be very tight on the speed. Maybe maybe the 97 and the 16, they can get some stage points on the, on the stage number one and then give up stage points in number two and be able to get some track position because the way that the 19 has been going to the field, it's pretty impressive. I mean, he's already running eight uh, from, from from the back. Absolutely. He's been impressive. So is Kyle Larson seen here in the 17. For Larson, it's plus 14. For Gibbs, it's plus 24. As you said, Daniel scored in the seventh position. That Toyota is electric here today. Yeah, Ty's proven to be a really good road racer. Really, ever since he's come into the sport, he's been pretty good at road racing. He started 1-0. and If you rewind back to 2021, <laughs> he's only 18 years old. And he goes out and wins in his debut. He had never done a green flag pit stop. First ever start on the road course at Daytona. And he won the race. And from there, I think we all agreed a star was born. Mayer hanging in the top 10 and 8 with all that damage. Doesn't seem to affect him that much. I mean, there's some t slow technical spots on this racetrack where it wouldn't affect him much. But there's also some areas where, you know, through the carousel in particular where he's at right now, it, you got to think he's given up a fair amount of downforce with that hole there. We have to make an apology. We got the announcer jinx on Ty Gibbs. Pass through penalty, shortcutting the course, turn six. Man, that's, that's the one thing that is so painful. You know, it's so painful because you're making that cut for a tenth of a second, Joey, and, and it, it's going to cost him 20 seconds. It, so it so it's, a, it, it's, it's painful, especially, especially with the kind of progress that he was making through the stage number one. Yeah, and it's the moment, like, it just happened to me in qualifying today. Oh, it happened you to me too. And you're like, oh, <laughs> damn no. it. Hopefully I ho I didn't see it. <laughs> and then they do, and you're like, oh, man. And then the police, boom. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, man. Look through the dirt there. The Looked like Shane missed the turn nine, eight and nine. That's the pass for the lead right there. Here comes A.J. Allmendinger. Shane Van Gisbergen leads the first nine laps, but he's under attack from his teammate. Almondinger, the king of the road, has won the last two at Coda, and he's on point with five to go on the stage. And AJ's been applying the pressure the whole run. You know, Shane was able to get out there early in the race, but AJ just kept that pressure on him throughout the run, waiting for that mistake. Boom. One mistake, he takes it. You know, that's experience. All these, these two guys, we know how good and talented they are. But the one difference between these two guys is experience with these race cars. AJ has been running these, how many wins he has? 11? 11 wins on these cars? So that's, that, just, that's, that's, that's the difference. That's just on road courses. He's just got 17 road courses. overall. Exactly, yeah, yeah. 11 just on road course racing in Xfinity Series. So I think actually this is maybe a good thing for Shane. I think uh, Shane, maybe he can learn a thing or two from AJ uh, by by seeing his line and his, his, his technique. You think AJ should stay behind him then? You know, show his hand? <laughs> That's not in AJ's cards, I don't think. I think AJ is one of those drivers that just gets after it all the time, no matter what. Look at the bottom line. His career at Austin, second in 2021 to Kyle Busch. He's won the last two years, so his average is 1.3. And you would say, my gosh, how could you do better than that? AJ at the Roval, undefeated. Every time he's ran an Xfinity car there, he's picked up the checkered flag. So. Maybe there's a slight bit of disappointment in his performance <laughs> at this road course in Austin, Texas.
Back to Cole Custer, who's ninth right now as we hit four to go on the stage. So this is getting to the point here, you know, this, this next couple laps where you may see some teams decide to flip the stage. They may pit before the end of the stage, give up the stage points, and be able to uh, try to get that track position and start the second round. After the, when you do that, you're, you're giving up all your points. So it's a pretty tough call to do, but keeping that track position, I think, is key. It's not easy to come through the field. We've seen that already for Larson, for Gibbs, these guys that started in the back, Chandler Smith as well. Like they're, they're coming through the field, but not at, you know, super speed. I want to go back to the penalty for Gibbs. After the pass through, he scored 16th. Analyze this, fellas. It's close, man, but I mentioned this in the beginning of the of the race. It's very difficult to judge the paint, the curve, when you are following somebody. Unfortunately for Gibbs, right there, he couldn't see the curve 100% because he was following the the another race car, the zero zero. So it was it was a little tricky situation, and uh, he got busted. And remember, now you're watching drivers jump over the limits right here, but that's not in those corners. It's just in three, four, five, and six that the track limits are in play. There were conversations coming to the weekend about doing it everywhere. NASCAR had a meeting yesterday. They said, nope, we're just going to keep it to the S's. Austin Hill qualified 11th yesterday, but he's been good early. Trading positions back and forth with Sammy Smith. At this point in the run, these guys are just hanging in there because the tires are hot, the brakes are hot, you know, and they're getting very, very close to either pit or stay out to get some stage points. So at this point in the run, these guys are having the worst grip that they're going to have uh, the entire run. You definitely can see the back ends wiggling a little bit. Corner entry, even through there, we saw the 21 of Austin Hill in the turn 12 there a minute ago, sliding the back end all the way through the corner. Definitely wore the rears off of it. And we know, and we talk about strategy and all that stuff, that pit road will close with two to go in the stage. So if you're going to flip it, going to be making that happen and pit under green prior to them closing pit road. We could be seeing that happen real soon for not just the two guys out front, but others. And just as I say that, here they are. Sam Mayer, Justin Allgaier, Kyle Larson, Cole Custer, and others making pit stops. Josh? Well, let's start with the 17 of Kyle Larson. The guy in it going for the win, so we knew he was going to short pit as he came in to get four tires and fuel. And then for the one of Sam Mayer, he's coming in to get four tires and fuel and fix the damage on the right front of that car. Are you the 81 of Chandler Smith originally did not want to pit this early in the race. They're going to go ahead and pit right now. Right now for him, the car just a little bit too tight, needs more front turn. Also is struggling to keep the brakes cool on that car. And you saw the double zero, Cole Custer on pit road as well. Cole Custer loose with lateral grip. They fought that in practice. They are still fighting that in the race right now today. Thank you guys. And we had another driver penalized for cutting the course in the S's. Austin Hill, who had driven from outside the top 10 to the top five, was penalized the last time around. That's a pass through penalty. So you either do it here prior to pit road closing or you'll have to start at the tail after the caution comes out and we cycle through at the end of the stage. We'll monitor his situation. You see him on track here with Sage Karam and Sammy Smith. And he was one of those drivers that decided to stay out there to collect the points. Now he cannot do that. So I guess he'd take his tires now and try to flip some. Now the, there's still two cars that can make this, this happen, right? Almendinger and Shane Viz Van Gisbergen are the two that are able to pit still with, before they get to the start finish line. When it gets to two to go, that's where the, the pit road closes. So a lot of cars have to pit with three to go because they'll be at the line before that. And that would be the penalty if you come when pit road is closed, right? So exactly. we saw John Hunter, Nemechek, Anthony Alfredo, number of drivers flipping the stage as we call it here at the end of stage one. And we monitor the progress of the top two. As Joey said, if they're gonna do it, they're gonna do it right here. And there they go. Here comes AJ. Scheduled green flag pit stops for the drivers that have dominated this race. Started on the front row, Van Gisbergen leads the first nine, Almendinger leads the last two, and their strategy play is to pit under green prior to the end of the stage. Let's go to Regan. Adam, so many different strategies playing out right here. These guys feeling like the best way to win the race is to go ahead and pit now before the end of the stage. The 16 of A.J. Allmendinger said his car is too loose. I've been quiet till he got the lead, then said I need a little bit of help with rear grip. The 97 to Shane Van Gisbergen. His car needs to turn a little bit better. Said overall, I need more grip everywhere, but especially with the front of the car. Saw the 21 going by. Austin Hill, he got in before pit road closed. 
he serves his pass through penalty. Oh, the and 97 he, stalled it. And he will return to the track. 97 stalled it, and very slow stop for the 16 as well. Uh-oh, he's, nope, he's he got it running now. Oh, now he's there. rolling. He's, they had such a big lead, I don't think it's going to affect a position for him. I don't believe. All of this cycles through. Parker Kligerman stays on track. He will pit once the stage ends under caution. He is the race leader. Sammy Smith is up there. Sage Karam stays on track. Parker Retzloff chasing some points is fourth. Riley Herbst is in the fifth position. You know, and I like this strategy for a lot of these cars, but in particular, Parker Kligerman. He realized, OK, I got a good car, a car that can run up front third to fifth. But I don't have the winning car. I don't have a car that's going to win this thing. Like, let's get a playoff point while we can. You know, that, that playoff point's going to pay all year long. Coming out of here at the end of the day with one, maybe two playoff points, even if you finish 30th, I think it's still a good day. Well, he was a driver that made it into the playoffs <laughs> last year on points. So it's not just that playoff point. It's the 10 stage points that put some of that extra money in the bank when you head toward the end of the regular season and you're trying to make a run toward the playoffs. Regardless of what happens the rest of the race, the 48 already has, like you guys mentioned, 10 points and, one, and, and it's going to have one playoff point. So that's, that's regardless of what happens. So that's, that's already in the bank in, in, in one lap and a half. And I look at Retzloff, the other Parker, who's up there inside the top five. He starts the year on fire with top fives at Daytona and Atlanta. The last two weeks, though, 35th and 35th, they need to get back on things when it comes to points. So they stay out here, and they, too, will put themselves in a position to get some nice stage points at the end of this first stage run here at Austin. And now, it's, it's, now this is the part they get to shine, right? This is awesome. But remember, when they pit, they're going to be like 25th-ish, maybe worse. They're going to be around there, maybe close to 30th, actually. That was a cow's zone. That's way back there. <laughs> hey, Justin Allgaier had made a pit stop, and they were going to play the strategy to flip it. Problem is, he was penalized in the S's for shortcutting. So because pit road is closed, we'll have to drop to the tail when we begin our second stage for that restart. And unfortunately for him, going to lose some of the track position he would have gained with their strategy. You know, somebody that I'm actually impressed, he's a 21 of Austin Hill because he had a penalty. He had to do a pass through and he still is in the sixth position. So, well, so he that, hasn't pitted for tires. He just made the pass through. Correct, correct. Yes. But, but still, he's going to get five points and then he has to pit anyway. So, you know, the penalty of the of the pass through was maybe three points instead of, you know, right. the, the, entire, the entire stage one. And A.J. Allmendinger, who said we'll flip the stage, is still going to get stage points, right? Isn't that impressive? It shows how large that advantage was. And Van Gisberg and Wood have done the same if they hadn't had the issue installed it, but he is going to get yeah, one. Yeah, he's going to get one point. Get he's 10th, yeah. But you look at the time difference, you know, and this is experience too. A.J. Allmendinger races these cars all the time. He sees 31 seconds behind the leader after the pit stop. Shane is 39 seconds behind the leader after the pit stop. You know, so that, that was all on pit road. That was all when he stalled it and, and trying to get it back running. He lost all that time. Just experience of getting used to driving these things. You know, the, the, the first gear in these Xfinity cars is so low when you're on these road courses. You gotta, you gotta I say, John Force burnout leaving the pit stall <laughs> to get it running. And also, I think at this point, you know, these guys, the 16 and 97, they're just cruising, right? They, they just want to finish there in the top 10, get a point or two, and finish the stage, take care of the tires, and, uh, and get ready for a stage two. And here we see how the 48 is cruising into stage win. Off the turn 20, back to the green and white checkered flag. Stage one goes to Parker Kligerman. It's his second career stage victory. He delivered last spring at Atlanta Motor Speedway. We'll handle pit stops, reset the field when we return. 14 laps in for the NASCAR Xfinity Series in Austin, Texas.
Next week, Fox Saturday Baseball returns with a star-studded showdown as Aaron Judge and Juan Soto lead the Yankees against Jose Altuve and the Astros. Or the Giants take on the Padres. It all begins 7 Eastern. Check local listings for the game in your area. Baseball is back. Here's the stage one point breakdown. I mentioned Parker Kligerman got the win. Great effort for Sammy Smith getting some of those stage points. He's working on his fourth consecutive top ten finish. Riley Herbst, Austin Hill, he set in, set his situation prior to the break. He gets five. Almondinger sneaks in there. Josh Balicki and Shane Van Gisbergen. Justin Allgaier at the end of the stage found himself 13th and he had some heated radio after being penalized on that last run. NASCAR, I'd love to have a meeting with them post-race about how insistent they are on their calls. This is some BS right here. I'm just telling you. I mean, at this point, it's too late, bro. Yeah, I hear you, man. Man, I'm going to get sweet. I need to find some smooth jazz music, bro. <laughs> We're going to be okay here, okay? Yes, I'm, I'm frustrated because of how others are racing. I'm frustrated at how my teammates are racing. Everything. Well, road racing will do that to you. It's, it, it is. It's a frustrating racetrack. And, you know, when something like this happens, here's the penalty. There you see the left front tire as a zoom in. Yep. Yep. I mean, that's <laughs> it's close, but we go back again of having somebody in front of you. Right there, Justin, he doesn't know 100% that he's on the, you know, side. on the other side. But since he has somebody in front, like you say earlier, Joey, sometimes when you don't feel the curve is when you realize that you are too far Over, yeah and it's too late and <laughs> you're too like late. Oh, 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 <laughs> and then you say what to yourself oh poop <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna go back to what you said i hope no one saw that i hope no one, <laughs> yeah, saw, that. Hope no one saw that yeah there's that too and uh so nascar has some technology now that flags it i talked to him about this and they flag it and then they're able to review it and then issue the penalty so I That's said to his crew chief, I said to his crew chief, Jim Pullman today, the racing gods giveth and they taketh away. So I thought they were due this afternoon because two weeks ago, the racing gods were not on their side. You guys had a front row seat for this. He was unbelievable in the final stage. Going to oh. get the win, put himself in the playoffs. Four laps to go. Yeah, inside of Four five to go, to go and go. that happens. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I would say my heart was broken for Justin. Checked out. It's over. You see his frustration. He tried to put the deck lid back on. You know, I don't think it's going to fit for, anymore. For whatever it is worth, I saw Justin on Monday, and I gave him a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him a hug. I said, man, I'm sorry, brother. You, you, you did a heck of a job, but it's part of racing. Race car driver therapy with Daniel Suarez. Who did see that coming? <laughs> <laughs> Those stops under green were lengthy for both A.J. Allmendinger and Shane Van Gisberg. And here is A.J. And watch the air hose, I, I think, actually got stuck when they were changing the tire, maybe in the uniform of the changers. So something you don't always see, but it all worked out, and he will maintain his position. Those that didn't pit at the end of the stage under green coming here under caution, Josh. I start with the eight of Sammy Smith, who stayed out to get those much needed stage points. He said he's happy with the front turn of that car. His biggest struggle right now is not having rear lateral grip. Moving on to the 26 of Sage Karam. He said, I need more drive off, but the turn is good in this car. Regan? Parker Kligerman and his team would have been happy with top seven points. They're really happy with the win in the stage. Right now, just a little bit of rear drive is all that he needs out of his race car. And the 98 of Riley Herbst already having trouble with the brakes, complaining they're too hot. The rear's in particular too hot. It is causing him to wheel hop all over the track. Sammy Smith jumps in front of Parker Kligerman, of those that made their way down pit road. And now the million dollar question. You got your stage points. Where do you restart if you're those drivers that stayed out? Stage two is on the way. A.J. Allmendinger back in front, and he's chasing that. The checkered flag here in Coda.
Just about ready for the restart in stage two. Those colleagues, Chevy's back out front. Almondinger, Van Gisbergen, Larson cycled up to third. Custer and Mayer make up the top five. Ty Gibbs, after starting at the back, getting a penalty is up to eight. We see the penalties from stage one. Long list there. Long list. You see, you see all the penalties that has happened, not just on pit road, but according, according the S's. You know, NASCAR has been busy. NASCAR, the police has been busy, and uh, and, and guess what? They're going to continue to do that. So they have to they have to put their stuff together so they can avoid penalties moving forward. Those drivers that ran it through the stage and then made their pit stops under caution. Sammy Smith, the first off pit road, will restart in the 16th position. Off to turn 20, and they're on it. Underway, stage two in Austin. You got the hitters up front now. You got A.J., Shane, also look right behind A.J. pushing him. Kyle Larson down the middle. Three wide turn one, maybe four wide. <laughs> Take your pick. A.J. The blows the corner. Everyone does. <laughs> Jesse Love up there in the Still mix driving through in the two. Haven't said his name today, but the rookie from California challenging Larson for second as A.J. Allmendinger jumps to the point. You see Shane Van Gisbergen Whoa. really got used up in the beginning of this restart here, falling all the way back to fifth. Welcome to NASCAR, right? <laughs> Welcome exactly. to corner number one in NASCAR here in Kota. You know, that, that's something that he will just get better as, as, as he goes, you know, and the aggressiveness that he has to has to be able to, to keep his position and be in offense uh, on these restarts. Oh, he's in the dirt. Austin, Austin Hill. Hill. Racing with Anthony Alfredo in the five. Alfredo had a problem yesterday with a tire in practice, so they didn't get much time on track. Another look at the restart. Turn one, you see him three, four wide. So much room. They designed this racetrack to really cause all the chaos. <laughs> you see, they put that curve way down on the inside of that big open entry. They, they're asking for it, and uh, that's what you get. I think the fans like it, though. I, I can't say as a driver I really like it, but... As a fan, I think that's pretty cool. And it's so much better now with the with the research zone because before, you know, if you were running 15, you could have, you know, die bump and and wreck, you know, whoever was running fifth. Right now, I feel like you are you are too far away. But the top 10 guys, they still can do the three, four wide. Look at Jesse Love qualified back outside the top 10 around 15. You know, he starts the year with two poles. He's winning stages. He's led more laps than anyone this year. Won 10 ARCA races a season ago, but everyone wondered how will he adapt to these cars and this level of competition? Right now, he is going to school with some of the best. Larson's up there, Gibbs, and now Van Gisbergen trying to get to his inside. Yeah, you see Jesse Love get a little loose down there on the curb, got in the tight Gibbs a little bit on the corner exit, opened the door for Shane Van Gisbergen to jump in there and grab a spot. Cole Custer starting to make his presence known. Sam Locked Mayer. Sam Mayer had that damage, but the one's hanging around. And Chandler Smith, who qualified up front, had the spin early, has worked his way back into contention. He's eighth. And well, look who's behind him. It's Sammy Smith. They're the ones that got together earlier. Just fill it out good here. Whoa. That is going to be a penalty right there. Uh, well, like hopefully I'm not calling it too soon. <laughs> but that was very close. That was very close. And, and we go back again in, in just losing your reference when you're following another car. It's almost like when you're following another car, you have to be a little bit conservative because you don't know exactly where you're going to land once you, once you get into the apex of the corner. Yeah, restarts are definitely the most treacherous time for these penalties, for sure, because you just can't see. Here's Ty Gibbs making the move on Larson. This for second. I don't want to talk too soon, but I think the 19 car is probably the best car today. Uh, he's been pretty strong. He's been able to go through the field. He already had a penalty, <laughs> and he's back in the. He's already in the top three, uh, but it won't be easy. You know, the 17, the the 16, the 97. They're gonna they're gonna give them a run for their money. Well, I like what Larson did there. You know, Ty tried to outbreak him. He let him go. Said, "All right, you're not gonna make that turn, bud." <laughs> <laughs> let it happen. Crossed him back over. Took it. Took the spot back down that long straightaway. You. You guys called it. Sam Mayer did get the penalty, so we'll have a pass through. And I just hope that NASCAR didn't 
make that penalty because of me. <laughs> said, no, no, Sam no. will never talk to you Sam, again. Sam is going to give me a call on Monday. <laughs> You'll have to give him a hug too. Yeah, I'm going to be, I'm gonna be delivering hugs on Mondays <laughs> in competition meetings. <laughs> You know, this part of the track, it's all about setting up for turn one pass, right? Trying to get as close as you can. If you're tight, Gibbs, trying to get as close as you can. Here's a penalty again for the one of Sam Mayer. You see him just on the inside of that red and white curbing. It's very close. I mean, we're talking about a few inches maybe, but that's just enough. There's the pass through. Saw the promo a moment ago for our coverage here tomorrow. Race day on FS1 at 2. Over to Fox at 3. We're racing at 3.30. And the stars of the show tomorrow, the stars of the show today, the top four in this race doing double duty. A.J. Allmendinger leads the way as we go side by side from Coda. You saw it as we were side by side. We come back from break, running inside the top 10, Cole Custer, and around he goes. And that's so unfortunate. He, he was doing a pretty good job, you know, staying in the top 10 and staying in the hunt. Gonna lose a ton of track position unofficially back to 19th right now. This group had been racing really hard for a while. They have, and you see Cole Custer getting trying to get to the bottom there and it looks like uh, Sandy Smith's just there. Yeah, he, he was never quite 100% clear. A little damage on the right rear for Jesse Love when he drove through. Here's the view from inside. One, eight, There's the damage I talked about for Jesse Love. He stayed in the top ten. Right now he's eighth, and he's now lost the bumper. Now, I don't know the rule on the bumper here on the road courses, but I know on other tracks you've got to have that back bumper cover on. That is a huge performance gain. Believe it or not, when you take that pumper cover off, that thing's got, it, it's its the unicorn. It's downforce and drag. <laughs> yeah, less drag and more downforce. How, that is a good place to be. How many times have we seen that where something goes wrong with that, that bumper cover and you're like, oh, that's a bad break. Actually, no, it's not. not Thank that you one. very much. <laughs> we'll 
Let's listen to what Cole said on the radio after all that. Did he get pushed or he just hit me? Yeah, he just got against you and stayed against you. So I won't remember that. <laughs> He's nobody happy with that. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, like I said, we, we looked at it. And it, it just looks like racing to me, but oh, look at this move. Mm -hmm. A little crossover, a little back and forth. Ty Gibbs, Shane Van Gisbergen racing for third. He crossed them over before they even got into the corner. And real quick, we did get a ruling. No bumper cover required for the two of Jesse Love. Oh, good so. for him. That's a unicorn that Joey was talking about. You know, Sammy Smith was involved in all of that, but he's sixth. And keep in mind, he was one of those drivers that ran through the stage, his tires are a little fresher and he's got some points in his pocket so that's good and Parker Kligerman also in the top 10 he was leading that group and won the stage and he's eighth right now there's Sammy in sixth I just think that move that that Shane just made was pretty impressive a similar move that he did in the uh, Chicago. race in Chicago yeah. where he crosses them over in the braking zone here let's, let's watch it one more time a big move by Ty. It makes me always wonder if he missed a gear there. It's kind of a weird move. And then you see Ty's breaking in there. He hooks a hard left like that in the braking zone to get back underneath them. Incredible. Those are moves. Those moves don't happen in America very often. We haven't seen those before yet. And it's the second time we've seen him do that since, uh, you know, the Chicago road course. Hey, you mentioned possibly missing a shift. These drivers doing double duty. The, the shifting situation much different today than tomorrow. How do you balance all the back and forth with that when you're going from one car to the other? That's something that is extremely important. And uh, that, that's honestly one of the things that me personally, I, I'm, I'm always a little bit concerned, you know, from when going from one car to another because as uh, I was talking to Shane yesterday about these these cars, the Xfinity cars, are so different, not just not just on the suspension, on the tires, and the brakes, but most important on the transmission. These cars still have an age pattern transmission, and obviously in the Cup Series, we run the, the sequential transmission. So it's very, very easy to have that most memory and make a mistake. Let's get an update on Jesse Love, ninth right now, Regan. Well, Adam been doing a pretty nice job in the car, but what you've seen the past few laps is he lost a few spots. Exactly what Danny Stockman talked to me about this morning. He said, we've got a fast car. It is better than where we qualified. They had trouble in qualifying. Wheel hopping in turn 11, expected to drive forward. But he said, now what we've got to work on is the race craft. Of course, this is Jesse's first road course race in the Xfinity Series. Race craft, exactly what they're trying to fine tune right now as he's out there in ninth place. He did win on the road course last year at Watkins Glen in ARCA competition. This is a totally different deal, but he's adapting quite well. Eight laps to go. Stage number two. Almendinger, Larson, Van Gisbergen, Ty Gibbs, Chandler Smith, your top five. Glad you're with us on FS1.
Sunday on Fox. The NASCAR Cup Series is here in the Lone Star State as the best drivers on the planet tackle the twists and turns at Coda. The pre-race begins 3 Eastern on Fox. Engines fire at 3.30. Mike Joy, Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick have the call. Kyle Larson will be a part of the fun. In fact, all these drivers up front today racing tomorrow. Let's get a report on driver 17, Josh. Well, Kyle Larson's been pretty quiet on the radio, but the team giving him feedback, telling him he's been really good in the braking zones, but struggling in the S's. Overall, they said he was running the same lap times as the top three, and they told him that the top two in front of him were fighting with rear lateral grip. Asked them how his lateral grip was. He said, I'm fighting the same thing, guys. Yeah, well, I mean, it sounds like tire wear. As there's seven to go here, I mean, it just you, you're on, you're asking a lot out of it, and uh, that's what's just what's going to be. You see behind him Shane Van Gisbergen, kind of trying to make up from his uh, not as good of a restart as he wanted uh, in the beginning of the stage, and he's able to hang with Larson, catching him just a little bit. You know, the one that I'm actually a little bit surprised is on the 19. You know, I, I was expecting a little bit more of him uh, once he was going to get close to the 16 and 17 and 97. He kind of like a stall. You know, he, 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 he has lost a little bit of, you know, of pace versus the first three guys. fun to, to watch how he goes through the S's. Watch how much he cuts this curve big time. His next two curves, he's going to pretty much be in the dirt. <laughs> and that's a good thing, right? <laughs> that's, that's where he's aiming to go. That's right. Okay, he's ra using all the racetrack up there. I think what I see there is he is a little bit in cruise control, managing the gap a little bit, not overdriving the entry there. Yeah, right now he just wants to take care of his tires. He knows that he has control of the race, um, you know, almost two-second lead. So he just wants to keep that gap. Uh, obviously, he doesn't know that uh, his teammate, then in 97, Chain, is is uh, is close to the to the 17, and uh, maybe with similar speed uh, to what he has right now. And he knows he's going to pit in four laps. You know what I'm saying? So, so you manage it to the stop, and and then after the pit stop, you cycle out and hopefully win or put yourself in position to be out front for that final stage. Yeah, I'd be interested in who's going who's gonna to try to stay out and take the points this time. You know, th when you do it in the second stage, you're pretty much kissing your good finish goodbye, right? You might be able to overcome it. If you run it, it all the way, you're talking about. Yeah, if yeah. you run it all the way and you take the points, you're going to start further in the back, and then the chaos will start because you're getting closer to the end of the race. It's going to be really hard to make all that back up. I will say, though, Sammy Smith played the game in stage one. Here he is riding six, so it's making it work, kind of playing both sides. Side-by-side -side break as we hit the latter stages of our second stage, Almendinger out front.
side by side is great. And you saw an unbelievable play at the front of the field. A.J. nearly lost the lead. And now the battle for second rages on between Larson and Van Gisbergen. Now these guys are racing the heck out of each other, crossing over each other one after another. Did, did Shane get He got back to his outside again. Oh, my God. He got him with the outside. I tell you, Shane's really good. Nice work there. <laughs> his race craft is very good. Yes. Race craft is so good. You know, that last lap when we were side by side and they were over in a carousel reminded me a lot of the ending here a couple of years ago when Chastain won and he was racing with Bowman and Allmendinger and that thrilling finish as they came to turn 19 and 20. Let's watch a replay of, of how this all started here. You see, AJ's kind of falling off here at the end of the run. Larson catches him. As they go into the stadium section here, makes a nice move to the inside. Can't quite get there. A little bit of contact. Checks it up. Look at Shane takes advantage. They're three wide for a second. And this is where Larson kind of lets his guard down for a half a second. And boom. And there wasn't much room there at all for no. Shane. And he just stuffs it in there. Is that as good as it gets for these drivers? I mean, oh, man. That's, that's got to be cool. top shelf, right? And here they are crossing over each other again. That was very good. That was a very good uh, crossover. But it doesn't stop here. <laughs> they went all the way to corner two. Yeah, here is he's trying to get to the inside of him. Shane sees the opportunity to get a two for two for one. Let me tell you, the, the 16 AJ right there, he got lucky that uh, that the 17 actually didn't swing, you know, him. Yes. <laughs> because he could have got ugly very quick. Well, I mean, you're Dinger. seeing that the, the three, in my opinion, the three best road racers going at it right there. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's great racing. Four to go, going to be three to go in the stage. So we'll start to see the strategy play out and how do you manage it? Do you pit here under green, try to gain that track position for the restart in the final stage? Or do you stay out, get those stage points, maybe a playoff point and put yourself back in the pack? We got some of them starting to pit back behind here at the three to go marker. Their, their hand is forced. See the 21, all, the eight, the 48. All scheduled pit stops. Yeah, pretty much right now, I mean, most of the cars are going to want to pit because if you don't, uh, then you, you're going to lose a lot of track position. What you got, Josh? An update on the eight of Sammy Smith. He said he's struggling a little when he carries the throttle on exit. Not too bad. His biggest complaint needs more lateral grip, Regan. Jesse Love and the two cars been working on the braking zone some. Feels like that's pretty decent, but in particular needs just a little bit more drive off. They've been adjusting for that, making it better as he goes. Two cars and teams that have done a really good job of playing strategy today. Sammy Smith, Parker Kligerman, because they stayed out stage one, got those points. For Parker Kligerman, he gets 10 stage points, but also gets a playoff point. You gain the track position. Now you flip the stage here as we head toward the final portion of stage two and have a real opportunity to maximize your day. Yeah, and the real question is, which drivers decide to stay out to take the points here? Because you know, I, I feel pretty certain the top five for sure are going to pit. Chandler Smith may may stay out here. Penalty you're for Jesse. Bury yourself. Penalty for Jesse Love, too fast on pit road. And the same for John Hunter Nemechek, too fast exiting. Second time he's been penalized today. Look, look how much dirt. <laughs> oh, my God. It's starting to become like a hole, you know, where these guys are putting the, the right front tire in there. Um, it's going to be interesting what NASCAR decides to do for tomorrow. Well, we've gone dirt racing before. <laughs> we haven't done a dirt road course yet. <laughs> We're working Here on we it. Are. <laughs> We're working on it. Since Bristol returned to the concrete in the springtime, we'll just go off road in Dakota, right? Why, Why not? not? At least one corner. <laughs> one out of the 20. Leaders making their scheduled green flag pit stops with two to go in the stage. Josh. Let's get an update on the 17 of Kyle Larson. We saw an absolute battle between him and SVG there. His biggest complaint, still fighting that rear lateral grip. They're going to make a track bar and air pressure adjustment to help him out, Regan. 
The 16 of A.J. Allmendinger has been very quiet on the radio overall, but when we saw those guys close up to him a little while ago, that was the first time he commented on the handling, said it was a little bit too tight with the nose. They need a little bit better stop this time than this last time in the 97 of Shane Van Gisbergen. He's lacking grip and traffic overall, especially with the rear. Man, very slow stop for the 97 of, uh, of, of Shane. Both times today. So as everything cycles and these guys make their pit stops, Brandon Jones has taken over the race lead. So the nine is going to run it long. Riley Herbst appears to be playing that game. So right here, uh, you know, the, the 18 and the, and the nine, they're going to get some nice stage points. But the interesting here, you know, is between the 16, the 17, and the 97, because those guys are going to be fighting to have track position because, you know, to, just to be in front of each other. That's remember, the, thing. the 18 is, is down a bunch of laps. Down five laps right oh, now. five laps, okay. So, really, Brandon Jones right now is, is in the position to win the stage. I, I, like, I like the strategy, right? The nine hasn't been talked about all day long. And you know what? They've been quietly consistent to begin the year. Three top ten finishes. Last year was a major struggle for them. So to come out today and get some nice stage points and a stage victory would be huge. And I look at Riley Herbst, and he told me in the garage prior to the race this afternoon, this is not my thing. So you just try to manufacture something, and they're doing it. If you can go out and get some points, and we all know that this team had a good start to the year and really picked up where they left off from a very good ending to 2023. And they're manufacturing something, which is a good strategy call. But look at, here's AJ. He's still going to get top five, right? These guys have all put it together here. Yeah, they're still going to get stage points. So for them, they're going to start with track position and get some points. Won't be the stage win, but they got a chance at winning the race. Obviously, the, the, the reason why they got themselves in that position is because they were so quick. They had such a good pace that they were able to, to build a good gap to the rest of the field. 35, Alex LeBay down from Canada, making his first start of the year. Tremendous road racer. When you look at his success, and there's been times when he was a full-time competitor in Xfinity, when you look at his success, it always comes on the road and fourth here as we wind down in stage two. Final lap. It's been a really good year for drivers from Georgia. Austin Hill wins those first two races. Chandler Smith delivered a couple of weeks ago in Phoenix. And this afternoon, Atlanta's own Brandon Jones with an opportunity to go out and win a stage. And let's go the route of junior motorsports because the end of 2023 was unbelievable. A pair of wins, put two drivers in the championship four, the top fives, the average finish. So far in 2024, it's not been a good thing, and they've had a lot of bad luck. Now, having said that, Brandon Jones, three top tens, as I said earlier, the same for Sammy Smith, and perhaps today can get them going in the right direction. You see their running order on this final lap of stage two. Yeah, they've definitely been running better than what that shows there. No that's, question. That's not a fair thing to point out. Sometimes the result of the race doesn't quite tell the whole story. Well, Allgaier, right at Phoenix. Allgaier is the we best example. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon Jones has bounced all around in his career. Spent time at RCR. Joe Gibbs racing. Second year at Junior Motorsports. Last time he won a stage was when he was driving for Gibbs, I believe. Back in 2022. So it's been a while for Brandon Jones to pick up that green and white checkered flag. But in position to do it here today, stage two at Coda. I think it's a good call. I, I really do. I think you get that stage point that or the stage playoff point, the 10 stage points. I like it. Riley Herbst easily in second. His teammate is in third. Here's Brandon Jones from 19 to 20. And back to the start finish line. Stage two winner. Driver nine from Atlanta, Georgia. Herbst will be second. And A.J., as Joey pointed out, is going to stay in the top five in the stage despite the fact they made their green flag pit stop. 
many drivers on pit road when we return. We're getting ready for the final stage in Austin. More disappointment for a driver from Junior Motorsports. We said Brandon Jones won the stage. He did not. He shortcut the course at turn five on that final lap of stage two. So he has the stage victory taken away. He'll have to start at the rear after pit stops. Your stage winner, Riley Herbst, his first stage win of the season and the first time he has delivered in a stage on a road course. Nice gift for, for Riley. He wasn't expecting that, and uh, he got it. But what a shame for, what a shame for, um, for Brandon Jones because obviously, you know, uh, man, he just uh, had a small mistake right there. Yeah, small mistake ends up being huge. Huge. And it, it hurts. The one-two finish for Stuart Haas in the stage. Those drivers will pit. That means 
Our guy A.J. Allmendinger going to be back on point. Let's dial him up here, uh, Joey. Let's go for it. A.J. Allmendinger, Joey Logano in the Fox booth. You got me? I got you, bro. Well, you're looking pretty good. You're going to have that clean air again. It looked like you were controlling the race there for a little bit, but then they all kind of caught you at the end of that, that stage and started racing each other to really get your way back ahead at the end of that stage, though. But what happened? Why were they catching you? I don't think oh, he liked I, that question. I didn't like it. <laughs> Did you lose me? <laughs> Jump in one more time. Maybe. I think he's too far yeah. away. Yeah, boy, what, you, what happens is this racetrack so big, and this happens a lot for the spotters. There's multiple spotters on the racetrack. It, it, the track's three, uh, what, 3.6 uh, miles? I, I, I would say something, something Joey. If, if you were asking me that four. question, probably I wouldn't answer you either. <laughs> I, mean, I just want to know what happened. Does he lose his rear tires? I, I wanted to know. Today, AJ going <laughs> for the hat trick. 2022 in Austin. This is after he was a runner-up to Kyle Busch in 21. He gets it done. Last year, if you remember, we didn't have stage breaks. It was a new rule at the time in NASCAR. We've since added those, obviously. But AJ had so many crazy things happen in this race. He rallies back. I asked his crew chief, how many cars did you pass in that race? He said, I think 800. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was an unbelievable day, but uh, they got a big win a season ago, and he's been in control today, leading 14 laps. AJ's definitely a, a tremendous road racer. That's why I wonder why they were catching him at the end. He had to have burnt the rears off it a little bit, and, and maybe the car was that way for a little bit, so hard to say, but um, I, I don't think it's just an easy hand him the trophy at this moment. It's a long ways to go. A lot of things can happen. Next weekend, pro football is back on Fox as the UFL kicks off next Saturday with the USFL champion Birmingham Stallions taking on the XFL champion Arlington Renegades. And kickoff weekend continues next Sunday on ESPN. And this is the UFL Combine, I believe. This youngster wants to play wide receiver. You look at the top 10, and then I take you bottom right of the screen at all the stage points. And for the afternoon, Riley Herbst is the winner, gets 16, despite Pitting and flipping the stage in both stage one and stage two. A.J. Allmendinger takes home 11 points. Kligerman wins stage one, gets 10 stage points overall. Alex LeBay having a good day as well. So now those drivers that elected to stay out, run it long, will come down pit road and everything will cycle back through to the dinger. Scheduled stops, and unless something crazy happens, final stop of the day for all of these drivers. The penalized Brandon Jones leading them down, Herbst and Custer behind him. Regan Smith, Josh Sims handling things on pit road, Regan. Well, Adam, the 98 O'Reilly Herbst, exactly what they wanted. Points on the stages as they got the most today. You just mentioned right now his car won't change directions to the right and left quite as good as he wants to. The drive off was better this last run. That's what they needed to fix the first run, but he felt like it hurt other parts of the run. The double zero, Cole Custer right now has no turn on the long runs, can't get the car pointed, and obviously is frustrated about that spin that he had at the top of turn one earlier on. Race off pit road is big here because it determines where you cycle back in with those drivers that stayed out who had already made their pit stop. Number one pit stall for Cole Custer because he won the pole last time out in Phoenix and he is the first one off. AJ is the king of the road. Can the dinger deliver again in Austin? The final stage on the way.
Those are the ringers of the road. Nice little piece coming back to energize things as we prep for the final stage in Austin, Texas. Five drivers on your screen and won the last 15. Been dominant. And oh, that, was, that was a good throw. So in the face. Sometimes that's what it feels like when you're road racing, right? <laughs> yes. Brotherly love. Here's some more brothers. Okay. Yep. If I had a nickel every time I seen this in my house. <laughs> <laughs> One's always ended up crying, I can tell you that much. Hey, I want to go back. I said those drivers have won the last 15. It's 15 of the last 16. And I say that because we have to give a little love to our guy, Eric Almarola, who won last summer at Sonoma down to Regan. Well, Alex Jones, crew chief for AJ Allmendinger, has been doing a great job today. We saw the 17 of Kyle Larson and the 97 of your teammate Shane Van Gisbergen and close in on you guys a little bit. You got a little extra in the tank, or what's going on there? I really hope so. AJ's done an amazing job all day. I feel like he is saving a little bit. Um, like I said, I wouldn't, I, I couldn't pick anybody else to be in the seat for sure. He's he's really done a good job. I know the 17 and 97 are really strong today. Hopefully, he's got a little bit left, and we'll see how it shakes out here. Good luck, Alex. Thanks, bud. I can't wait for this restart to begin the final stage, and we'll get it with just over 10 laps to go. Almondinger, Larson, Van Gisbergen going to be in charge of the field. Getting ready for the restart to begin our final stage here at Circuit of the Americas. It's been an outstanding day for colleague racing. A.J. Allmendinger, Shane Van Gisbergen have been special all weekend long. Unfortunately, Josh Williams has not been great on track. You see he's out of the race right now. But I have to offer our congratulations. Josh was not here yesterday 
for practice and qualifying. He was back home with wife Trasia. They welcome baby Edelin this week. Congratulations to them. He said he's so excited to be a dad. Talked to Josh earlier today. I'm happy for everyone involved. And even though his day on track didn't go the way he wanted, he'll be so happy to get back home and see the family. Still a special week for him for sure. It's always a, a weird moment where it's your, your wife has a, a baby and you go, all right, honey, well, I'm going to leave now. <laughs> Got to go. the track. <laughs> <laughs> that goes over well. <laughs> Pacing the field today, the Toyota GR Supra. It makes the left-hand turn down the pit lane, and we are all set for the restart. Almendinger, Van Gisbergen, front row. Time to settle it at Coda. Way better timing for uh, for chain right here. Let's see. Let's see how things settle uh, corner number one now. Yeah, they're all tight on top of each other. You know this breaking zone is going to get really wide. Larson looking inside. Chandler Smith making a play. Ty Gibbs is there. But once again, A.J. Allmendinger out front. A.J.'s done a good job at protecting the lead. And even though he runs wide there, he's able to still keep control of his car in control of the race, even more importantly. Yeah, it seems to me that everyone goes white. You know, it's just a matter of not going too white. But uh, since everyone is going white, probably the penalty is not that big. And he's still in protection mode in, on entry of the corner. Austin Hill qualified outside the top 10. Had a penalty, but he's fifth. Chandler Smith looking for another top five is six right now after an early spin. So dirty. <laughs> corner number eight right now. You can see the, the dust uh, everywhere. Uh, but I mean, they, they are <laughs> they're going through there like shams, everyone. Good comeback for Justin Allgaier. Mentioned the day for Junior Motorsports and Brandon Jones disappointed, but his JRM cars coming back late. And here's the battle for second. Van Gisberg in 97, Kyle Larson in the 17, and waiting in the wings, Ty Gibbs. He's waiting and right behind him. It's going to be really tight with Austin Hill and Chandler Smith as well. I mean, Chain knows that uh, if he wants to battle with AJ, he has to make that move on Larson quick. Uh, he cannot waste too much time. So that, that was a good move right there. You know, it's so interesting. The top two started up front, but behind them, a bunch of drivers that have had some kind of a problem today or started at the rear. 17 and 19 of Larson and Gibbs coming from the back. We talked about the spin for Chandler Smith. The penalty right. for Austin Hill and Justin Allgaier and all of them find themselves in the mix here. Somebody looking backwards. Exit of the, of the stadium. 39 Ryan car. Sieg. Yep. Ryan Sieg. He had spent some time in the top 10. And overall, it's been a pretty good start to the year for him. And what about uh, what about Austin Hill? He's uh, he's right there. Uh, in the battle with, uh, with the, in the front group in the top five. And look at Parker Kligerman and Sammy Smith. Three wide into turn one with Chandler Smith. And I mentioned Sammy and Parker because they're the drivers that made the play in stage one to run long, get those points. And now they're in a spot to get a great finish on the afternoon with 11 to go. We look now at our Toyota top performers and somewhat of a quiet afternoon. But the best of the bunch right now is the man in fourth. Ty Gibbs, Chandler Smith having another good day. Sage Karam, regardless of where this thing ends, he has served notice that he can play. Alex LeBay scored an 18th. Let me tell you, Adam uh, and Joey, I, I've been I've been so impressed with AJ and uh, and Shane because I thought that once the 17 and the 19, you know, we're gonna get some track position. I thought they were gonna give them a, a, a run for their money, and these guys they are just extremely good. They have such a good race craft. They have good speed. They are strong oh racers. They're just good. Three this wide. makes me nervous. Two Whoa. for one, Sage Karam. Wow, there's a lot happening in this picture right here. Sage Karen with a big three wide move to the bottom into turn 12. Get in the old twofer. Almost. Maybe not. They're still three wide. <laughs> he might get spun out. <laughs> oh, oh Sam Smith got spun out there. You see him. You know what? That, that was on purpose. That was on purpose. It's not the first time that the 8 and the 81 
they've been uh, they've been getting together. And let me remind you that the 81 is uh, Sammy Smith's uh, old car. He's not very happy they're doing a burnout. Yeah, I don't know. That's a huge burnout. I feel like there's more going on there than just a, a cool burnout. Maybe put a camera on those two post race. Going to be 10 to go as we come off turn 20 here. All that cycle, Sage Karam up to seventh. I said when he was 11th, he's had a, a great day, even if it doesn't end great from here. But he's picked up four positions since I said that. You see that left front fender rub there on Chandler Smith. That's a big fender rub. Yeah, that, that one might be too much. Yeah, that, that won't last very long. Him drifting back has opened the door for Parker Retzloff in the 31 to get back inside the top 10. Let's go side by side with 10 to go. Almendinger, Van Gisbergen, Larson, Gibbs, Hill, your top five. Strong finish coming at Coda. Nine to go in Austin, Texas. The battle for the lead is on. Here's Shane Van Gisbergen inside of his teammate, A.J. Allmendinger. And we saw a little bit of a mistake from A.J. Allmendinger in turns eight and nine, where all the dirt is, got a little bit loose. Shane was able to capitalize and make the pass into 11. How hard are these two hustling it? They just ran their fastest lap of the race. They're hustling hard. We've seen right before we went to commercial, AJ had that thing hung out. He's running really hard. Right now, he's going to have to keep running hard to keep him in sights. And he's oh, got to try yeah. to get him offline. He's got to try to get him offline a little bit, keep him close to him. What a great race, man. These guys, the race car of these guys is just very, very, very good. Both of them. Yeah, I think you, you get Shane two car lengths, it's going to turn into six really close, uh, really quick. Oh, as good. soon as he gets a little bit of space, he can open up his line again and start making up speed. I'd say he's at that point right there. Let's check out team radio, starting with second place, A.J. Allmendinger. All mental, Coleman. It's all mental for both of them. They'll race it out good, but it's all mental. That's why he wanted you up there. Earn your money today, brother. Earn your money. 
<laughs> I think <laughs> I think AJ I is using his stuff. This is why we came here to earn your money right here, brother. Have fun with it. You know, you got I sent Goldman a text earlier, shake and bake right here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but I think what they're trying to say is to keep AJ's head in the game here uh, th throughout this final stint here, because this is, like we said, two two of the heavyweights of, of road course racing going at it head to head. I don't too. think it's over yet. Only eight laps to go. AJ keeps him in sights. So maybe he can keep some tire on that car. If there's a late race restart, it, it's, it's going to be tough. No, it takes oh, one mistake, it. a he little mistake there. right there. Look at the amount of time AJ just gained just through that section. This race is everything but over. What a good race I, I, I will watch it right now. Oh, he got a little looser. You can hear him kind of squeal the tires a little yeah, bit. The, the 16, he he's struggling with rear shattering. You can hear the, the, the rear tires shattering and, and doing that vibration thing. He has to be very, very gentle with it. A little bit more than the 97. Ooh, Teammates ooh, racing ooh. for the lead. Teammates racing for seventh. Mayer and Allgaier. Allgaier's not letting him on the racetrack here. <laughs> oh, he's not happy with Sam Mayer. You can, something's going on. Talked a lot this weekend about track limits. What about teammate limits? I, sure. I don't know. I, I mean, we heard, it, um, Justin Algar say earlier that he was upset with his teammates and, and NASCAR and, and and really whoever else was around them at the moment. Here's some radio from the seven. Huge hole behind both of you guys, even on the out. We need to stop it. We need to bring home top fives, okay? Stop it. Well. I like that from the pit box. I mean, you think about some of the troubles these teams have had. In particular, Sam Mayer to begin the year. So you, you want to make sure you finish it off here. The advantage now one second for Shane Van Gisbergen over AJ Allmendinger. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. I think for AJ to 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 complete the pass right now that uh, that Shane knows that that he's a little bit faster. I think the balance of the race car is a little bit better at this point. Uh, he just has to put it on track. Oh, man, that was close, huh? It's such an equally matched race here between these two that it, it's, I mean, you looked at it earlier in the race, AJ had the, the dominant race car. Yeah. A little, little, I say dominant, a little bit better race car. Yeah. Now it seems like it slipped around the other way at the moment. Now, like, oh, no, there goes this. This could Alfredo. change everything if we got a caution and a restart. Alfredo gathers it up, drives on, and we stay green. So they're off of turn one, going down into turn two. Oh, there's a car there. And he's going to get a, a little doink in the door. Send it right around. Woo. Thirty-two, you saw there Austin Green making his Xfinity debut and running inside the top 15. Go back and listen to AJ again. Alex, what'd you do? Hit the mayor out of both three ears. Suck. <laughs> that, that, that's a that's a joke between all I think crew chiefs and engineers. <laughs> what'd you do to my car? You ruined it. I, I tenth of air pressure. <laughs> Yeah. That's the worst. You killed it. I don't care what you did. You killed it. It's over. It's, uh, it's funny how it changes so quickly just on how you work your tires sometimes. And maybe a tenth of air probably feels a little bit different to him, maybe. But obviously not a huge change. But it does look like it. You know, I, I say it even when, when he was still in the lead. Like, I felt like the rear of a AJ's car, it was a little bit more on the limit than uh, than chains. And, and right now he's paying the price for that. Our Ford performance onboard camera, Cole Custer, won the race off pit road after pitting at the end of stage two. He's worked his way back to ninth. Right behind him, just a moment ago, you saw Sage Karam, who's got a top ten going. And some really good stories outside the top ten, just outside the top ten. 
including Parker Retzloff. Look out, Patrick Gallagher off track. He just kind of came to a stop there, which makes me think, well, oh, oh, easy, easy, easy. Van Gisbergen says, get that thing going. I don't need a caution. And there he goes. Oh, for a second, I thought he was going to get stuck. He's close. So at what point, if you're A.J. Allmendinger and you're this far back, you're six laps to go, you got a little bit of a cushion behind you, not much, do you decide, you know what, I'm going to save my tires a little bit and pray there's a caution? I think already. I, think I mean, he, catch he should be doing that already. Right? Catching Shane is, is a little bit out of the question at this point, I think. It's kind of borderline. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think he's going to be able to do anything without a caution. Here's some of those drivers outside the top 10 we were referencing before Gallagher went off. Parker Retzloff managing the afternoon quite well. Jordan Anderson racing. This is where it all kind of began for them two years ago when Tyler Reddick finished inside the top five. Austin Hill with a late rally. Got around Kyle Larson. What's the story with that 17 now, Josh? Well, yeah, before we saw Kyle Larson battling with SVG and Almendinger for the lead, but this last run he's been complaining about the grip on that car. And then over the last couple of minutes, he came over the radio and said he's got a flat spot on his tire. The team told him, if you want to come in and pit, you can. If you want to ride it out, we'll leave it up to you. Mm. Yeah, so he, he must have slid it the, the front somewhere in a braking zone. And, you know, that flat spot doesn't help the grip any. You know, you, you're... Your tire is not round anymore. <laughs> yeah, and the problem of the of the flat spot is that you cannot continue to be aggressive on the braking on, on, on the braking zones anymore because every time that you are aggressive on the braking zone, that flat spot continues to find themselves. Actually, we just saw there the the, the 17 locking again, uh, and uh, and it's going to continue just to get worse. I would say there's only five laps to go, but this track is 3.4 miles long. Five laps can be really long here. Yeah, five laps is going to take us 10 minutes here, so we still have a lot of racing left, especially if for some reason the caution comes out. This is a day that Sam Mayer desperately needed. Got to finish it off. And you see his results, the three DNFs, all crashes. 11th at Atlanta. They ran out of gas later. Might have been able to have a better finish there. But across the board, they needed something good to happen. And it's not a win. They're not going to lock themselves into the playoffs, but they'll make a huge gain in the standings if they can complete this run in the top 10. Well, we heard him on the radio. Just get us a finish, right? Like, get, just, just if it's a top 10, if it's a top five, just get it there. That's what they need at this point. You see Shane just, he's up there. He's going to. He's probably knocked it down a couple notches as well, able to, to save some tire just in case a late race caution too. So, you know, at this point, little cat and mouse between the first two cars. I, I think they have good control of this race, but <laughs> he said it so many times in NASCAR racing, you think it's over, you think it looks like he's going to check out with it, and boom, caution. I mean, I go back to earlier today, we talked about the fact that this is part two of our double header. In the truck race earlier this afternoon, it happened. got a couple of late cautions, and that changed the complexion of things. Had to earn your money at the front if you were Corey Heim. You know, it, it doesn't take much. You know, all it takes is somebody to go out of course and, and, and just get stuck in the grass or get stuck in the in, in the gravel. Uh, it doesn't take much. And right now, let me tell you, these guys, they've been driving this race car for over two hours. So everyone is fatigued, everyone is tired, and uh, anything can happen. Four laps to go, and we've kind of had a theme developing this year of late drama and maybe the unpredictable. And I start with Atlanta when we thought it was all going to work out. Those Fords run out of fuel. We get a caution. We get a restart in overtime. Jesse Love out of gas. And it's Austin Hill who wins. And then we had this earlier. Justin Allgaier looks like he's going to win for the first time. Inside of five laps to go two weeks ago at Phoenix and has the tire issue into the wall opens the door for Chandler Smith to win in overtime anything can happen I have to say 
when I heard that Shane Van Gisbergen had signed up to run full time in the Xfinity Series this year and doing so with colleague. I was very excited to watch he and AJ go toe to toe at the road courses and what you gain by bringing in a driver like this in this era of NASCAR is when you're this good at the road courses and there are six of them, you know you open the door to go out and win and lock yourself in to the playoffs. And he has taken advantage of that asset here today. And I'd say one of the most impressive things here for Shane is, you know, when he jumped into the cup car, it is closer to what the supercars are for him. The, the, the way the rear end is, the way everything is. Oh, it's a 24 Ed back Jones. around here. He's got, it looks like he's got a lot of fluid. He does, the weekend. Fluid, man. And, and that could be a caution right there. Even I if think, he gets rolling again, he's going to have fluid leaking underneath that thing. I think I think NASCAR is going to tell him to stay there, to stay there, not to bring the fluids. I don't know. I don't know what is going to happen, but there is a lot of fluids in there. That's turn 11. Oh my God! And caution is Yellow. out. She's wow! Not happy. <laughs> And She's going to go for a walk. <laughs> She's going to go for a walk. That's too much. I got to go for a walk. I feel like we jinxed this because we Should showed be. what happened in Atlanta. We, we said what it happened happens in Phoenix, all the time. And now this. Adam, Adam, you, you say we. Don't, 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 are you speaking <laughs> French or what? Let's see what happened here to Ed Jones. You see the 24 to 91 of Weatherman. A little bumping and banging. Oh, he, he got him good there. They were racing for a spot inside the top 15. Yeah, the 91 wasn't too happy there. I got to say, I love the paint scheme for Kyle Weatherman. My radar for the Weatherman driver. Pretty good. A nice fit. You give and you take. There you go. You know, what is the interesting thing is where the fluid comes from. Yeah, maybe, because the, maybe the, that all happened. Like, yeah. Yeah, but the fluid was coming from the 24, I think, when he was sitting there. But that contact wasn't hard enough to, to do anything you know, related with so. the fluid, right? Look, there's clearly some fluid in that car. Now it's going to get interesting, ladies and gentlemen. So what do you do, guys? Do you get speed for tires? What position you are to no, pit for tires? Obviously, if you're in the top five, you stay yeah. out. Uh, but what about everyone else? Yeah, I mean, I, maybe back around. They got 30 cars Oof. on you know, the lead lap, you know? Go, going back to a truck race, Connor Silish, he was running, what, maybe Eight, nine, he put tires, he right. in the top five. Yeah. So he had two green-white okay. checkers with that, though. We, so he had yeah. an over-white, over, over white, or not one green-white checker, he had overtime finish, yeah. which gave him a little bit more time to get back through the field. I, I feel like outside the top ten. Outside the top ten? Maybe. As we anticipate maybe a little bit of late race strategy. We look forward to what's coming your way next Saturday. Practice and qualifying early Saturday morning from Richmond. First short track race of the year, and we're green Saturday afternoon, 12.30 Eastern time, right here on FS1, round six. That will be a dash for cash qualifier. And in the booth, the dynamic duo. There it is. They're putting us back together, me and Bradley, <laughs> Joseph and Bradley back in the booth. <laughs> there will be some trash talk. Oh, on track and in the booth. That. Yes. Yes, there is. It'll be back-to-back -back races in Virginia. We go to Richmond, we go to Martinsville, and then we return to Texas at the Texas Motor Speedway. Shane Van Gisbergen has been here before. He did it in supercars a number of years ago. He had success. He was on the podium, didn't get the win. So he's hoping today to rewrite that and set himself up. It would be the first of his career. And if he delivers, boy, is he going to earn it based on the fact of who's behind him and having to uh, go through this final restart, this restart late in the race. Well, and that's where I was kind of going with that thought before we've seen this caution come out here late is Shane jumping into a cup car is closer to what he typically raced in Australia. These Xfinity cars, we talked about earlier, the way the rear end is in these things and the wheel hopping and all that, he said it himself, how different these cars are. So to see him adapt into this Xfinity car against A.J. Allmendinger, one of the best, probably the best that we've seen in this series on, on road courses and come out here and give him a run for his money right off the bat shows the talent that this man has. It's pretty impressive. He says he's raced everything, right? I mean, in the beginning of the show, he said, I've, I race it all. 
it's not surprising at all to see him up here, but definitely a big challenge that we haven't seen many others be able to do so quickly. This is his fifth career Xfinity start, so it's impressive to win in your fifth start, but what about going 1-0? That's what he did. We saw this off the top of the broadcast today, winning on the streets of Chicago at the top level of NASCAR. And at that point, everyone was asking, who is <laughs> Shane Van Gisbergen? Three-time supercar champion, guy? 81 wins. I know from one New thing. New Zealand. None of us even knew how to say his name. <laughs> and I know after that race, I was embarrassed. I just remember, I was like, this guy just came in here and made us look like a bunch of fools. <laughs> I was angry. Let, let me tell you, when, when, I, when I saw that in Chicago, I wasn't so, so surprised because that was his wheelhouse on the streets. Now we are here in Cota. We've been racing in Cota for a handful of years, going to Xfinity Series, a brand new car. I had a conversation with him yesterday about the car and adapt this quick. That's impressive. That's extremely impressive. Chicago was very impressive, but this is another statement in that direction. We roll this open. Let's see who, who is coming for some tires. Whoa. Ty Gibb? No. Uh, uh, shot, shot good fake. fake. <laughs> the 17's coming in. <laughs> he got us. Larson has some problems. He's going to come down. We're going to overtime. At Circuit of the Americas, Shane Van Gisbergen is in front of the field. And he'll lead him on the restart when we come back to Austin.
before we do the restart, we have to do the choose. Teammates at the front, and they go together oh. inside lane. That was oh. interesting. We were not expecting this. It's, sometimes it's hard to give up the, the front row, but knowing that you can go three wide in the bottom in corner number one is a good option as well. So now it's interesting. So when AJ did that, obviously it's... I, I, He's going to try to get underneath Shane into turn one, I got to assume, somehow. Behind them, Austin Hill, who's trying to eke out another win. And we all remember how he pulled it off at Atlanta with that fuel mileage deal. Parker Kligerman up there, he's never won. And joining Van Gisberg, and on the front row is Ty Gibbs. There will definitely be contact in turn one. I guarantee you that from somebody, somehow, there will be some bumping and banging up there. Two lap shootout to finish it at Coda. It's overtime for the Xfinity Series, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Oh, man, uh, everyone Gibbs got, got a, a good, good job. Start. Gibbs going to be in good shape here. AJ to the middle. Austin Hill way Austin low. Austin Hill way down in the corner. Oh, oh they all God. ran out of room. Van Gisbergen runs them wide. Here comes Austin Hill. Well, and AJ lost a whole bunch of spots there. And so did Ty Gibbs. Oh, Kligerman gets shucked out of the track. Oh, my God. He's a mess now. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, he got moving right there. The 16 did. So Van Gisbergen is able to take the top spot. Hill is second. Sam Mayer is now up to third. Wow, what a big turn of events. Uh, and all in turn one, I mean, we kind of seen it coming. It was just going to be absolutely crazy into that first corner. And everybody got to the middle of the corner. I think they just released the brakes and said, we're, yeah, we're, going, we're going up. <laughs> we're, we're all going up together. Wow. We'll have to see a replay of that before the end here is. Let's go back, turn one on the restart. Here they go. You see Shane and AJ on the bottom. Ty Gibbs almost has them cleared. And Shane just, he just, he just opens it up and yeah. wipes them all out right there. <laughs> and there's a caution. Another caution. Oh, man. wow. The 98 of Riley Herbst, heavy damage. And because Van Gisbergen had not gotten back to the white flag, we'll reset him and do it again. Ryan Ellis also involved. It'll be double overtime at Circuit of the Americas. Leland Honeyman with big damage. Yeah, that was a big that was a big wreck right there. A lot of damage for the for the 98. You'll have to see what happened there. Here they are into, I believe that's turn 11. Oh, just that one just, once one got sideways and stops up in the field and just piles in. You see my all just checking up. And I, I mean, it's something you notice with these Xfinity cars compared to the cup cars. You know, the, the front bumpers are so much weaker on yeah. these cars and they yeah. they fold up a lot easier. That There's a couple bumps and it looks like they ripped the whole nose off. Oof, that's a lot of oil right there. Yeah, that's going to be quite the cleanup. There's Riley waiting for. Oh my God, that's a lot of oil. He's waiting for somebody to come pick him up. Pick him up. Good news for him, he won that stage. So you get those points, and that helps out. How are we doing on uh, on fuel, Adam? Because uh, I mean, this is going to take a little bit, uh, a little bit while to to clean up. There is a lot of oil, so that's a good question. Well, I mean, a lot of teams didn't want to see overtime. Now you get double overtime, which creates major questions when it comes to fuel mileage. And the other thing we have to pay off here is there was a penalty on that last lap. AJ Allmendinger cut the corner and so he gets 
the push to the rear of the field for what will be our second overtime restart. Yeah, we saw that, and I didn't want to. Whoa, ooh, a little, little contact under caution here. You see that? Yeah, the, I think I think that was with the 19. The 19 is is Madaheim. Uh, I'm pretty sure AJ is not very happy with his teammate. Everyone is mad at each other. Everyone was pushing each other. Already the it, 19, all he saw was the 16 pushing at him. I, I like to see what happened under caution here. That was maybe that's this here. Well, this is under caution. Ty Gibbs kind of knocked his nose in a little bit there, even doing that. Yeah, he, I don't know if I'd mess with AJ. Yeah, <laughs> he bites back. If like, they don't settle it to end it today, they'll both be back on track here tomorrow racing with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got to. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Middle of your screen, black vest, Matt Collig, the team owner, talked earlier to Chris Rice, team president. This is all about the penalty for A.J. Allmendinger. You know, that, that's very interesting because in that penalty, obviously, it was he he didn't cut the S's to gain an advantage. You know, he, they were racing side by side. He got pushed, and then he, he went wide. Yeah, he caught the corner. He caught the S's. But it's a little, a little bit different. Let's go to Josh. Here with the crew chief of the 21, Andy Street. Andy, you guys have put yourself in position. Going into the day, you told me you didn't necessarily have a winning car, but you were going to work on it. Well, now you guys are in position. What's it going to take to get around the 97 to bring this thing home? Well, it's going to take quite a bit. That 97's had great pace all day, but I got a lot of confidence in Austin Hill. And this team has worked really hard all weekend to give Austin what he needs, and uh, I think he can go do it for us in the right situation. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. I, I think another question to you, we saw Parker Kligerman kind of get pushed out on that last right? restart. Yeah, I don't know what the call is on that one quite yet. And that one wasn't close, you know what I mean? Like, but he that was all a part of a, a racing situation as they came down through the S's. And I was going to say at the time, we'll wait and see how NASCAR officiates this. Let's go back and watch everything that's unfolded here. Yeah, there you see AJ clearly. Yes, but like I said, oh, the, the, ha, something else happened in the in the corner before. And you see him right here. If we can if we can go all the way back to the previous corner, you are going to see him all completely out of uh, out of the line, and that's how he 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 ended up in that in that position. Yeah, and you see here the the 48 gets loose and gets pushed out exactly and that gets AJ he's a bit offline here trying to slide through like I'm sliding through pushing shoving still out of control yeah and he's kind of lost where he was maybe a little bit I mentioned that truck race earlier today and how it ended with those two late cautions and this has been similar AJ coming down pit road as he does that let's listen to team radio I don't think that was us. I think that was the 48, Coleman. Yeah, copy. I'm telling the official right now. That was absolutely the 48. He, he it, it was quick. both. It, it was both of them. But in my opinion, if you're going to penalize one, you have to penalize both. I agree. It's either one or, or, or it's either both or none. Because both got pushed white in the, in the situation. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to see some clarification in, in how that is called. We'll go through a little bit more of a reset here once we do the choose. But look at some of these drivers up there in the top 10. I mean, Austin Hill, we've talked about. Sam Mayer is hanging in there. Parker Kligerman, when we mentioned his situation on that last restart, he's fourth right now. Sage Karam in the top five. Jesse Love, sixth. John Hunter Nemechek, how in the world does he find himself in the top 10? They've had so many things happen, not just today, but this weekend. Cole Custer is there. And the 32 of Austin Green making his first ever start. And we go back and tell the story of his family. I said it earlier, his dad, David, who's now a NASCAR official, 
was the Xfinity Series champion 1994. His uncle Jeff won the Xfinity title in 2000. His uncle Mark has competed or did compete for many years in the Xfinity Series. And his cousin Tyler, Mark's son, is actually one of his spotters here today. So it's all in the family, so many connections. And you see so many times at the end of these races, especially on road courses, survival is the name of the game. <laughs> you, know, you can have a good race going the whole time, and before you know it, you're wiped out. Hey, and Larson, he made that pit stop because they had flat spotted their tires. And so now he's going to restart inside the top 10. Yeah, I was concerned when he pitted. I was like, whoa, boy, no one pitted with him. There was only three or four cars that pitted with him and obviously had a good restart managed to get through all the, the garbage there. Now he's in a, a good spot there. So, Regan, you got the 97 crew chief? Joey, I do. Bruce Schlicker, crew chief for Shane Van Gisbergen. You got your driver in position. These things are never easy at the end. What do you tell him as we come to another green white checker? I just keep doing what you do. I mean, he's so good. Such a great race course driver. So uh, we're trying to save a little bit of fuel because, uh, yeah, I mean, we're close. We're still good, but we're close. So just uh, be patient try to get this thing finished. Uh, good luck. Thanks. Thank you. It's had a handful of laps since they last pitted. So you're running under caution and now we get to choose. And you choose to see Austin Hill second row in the bottom. That was the same move AJ did. And then that Sam Mayer going for it. And hey. Parker Kligerman in the same spot he was last time. He, he went for that fourth spot. He's just doing it again. Hey guys, something that I'm really paying attention is on the fuel situation. Uh, Shane's crew chief say we are close. We are not super close, but we are close. So, what happens if we, uh, if we get another caution? Can they actually make it? That, that's going to make things not close, but very, very close. And they told us 20 ish laps. Yeah. So <laughs> they, they, they started, they, and some of them been under caution, right? Those, those obviously are better, but. Uh, I, I think they lie to us, Adam. What do you think? I was going to say the <laughs> emphasis on ish, right? <laughs> ish. Yeah. If there is a situation where cars may have to pit for fuel, I think the 17 is going to be sitting in an amazing position right there. One more overtime finish, they're going to be in a heap of trouble. Yeah. It's double overtime. If the caution comes out prior to the white, then we'll reset them and do it again, which is what we're doing here. But if the leader can come around, get the white flag, the next flag will end the race, whether it be the caution or the checkers. Front row, Shane Van Gisbergen alongside Sam Mayer. Mayer has won three of the last four on the road. Row two, Austin Hill, Parker Kligerman. Kligerman looking for his first ever victory in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Other drivers up there in the front three rows that have never won, Sage Karam and the rookie Jesse Love. You see Sam Mayer up there, right? Just looking for a solid finish. He's got himself in the danger zone. He's in a great spot, but he's also in a. We, we see what happened to the outside car there with, with Ty Gibbs last time. He got washed all the way out into the basically the gravel trap on the exit. So it'd be interesting to see how this works out. Austin Hill, we know he's aggressive. He's not going to be afraid to make the move. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. Um, three wide, four wide. Uh, how wide things are going to get on the on the outside. And how good of a launch uh, the 21 is going to be able to get with, along with the 97. Here we go. Double overtime at Circuit of the Americas. Austin Hill launched straight with him. Pushing on the outside lane. It's going to. Oh, my goodness. They're three wide already. Four wide already. Aggressive into turn one. Austin Hill right oh in the hip gosh. pocket Driving of Van Gisbergen. Oh, my God. Austin Take Hill slides through him. and takes the lead. And he just shoved him right in there. He said, I'll just push you. I, I see how this game worked last time. Well, let me tell you, this is everything but over. Oh, I don't know. Look at Andy Street cheering from the pit box. Austin Hill has a flair for the dramatic. Sage Karam in second right now. Van Gisbergen trying to get it back. This is a long two laps, and you see right there, Van Gisbergen going to get back to second. Austin Hill is going to have to put up two of the best laps he's ever run in his life yeah. to maintain this lead. This is going to be a hell of a last lap. Uh, 
Austin Hill has to do everything ahead. He cannot look to his mirror because they have <laughs> is coming. There is a chain, a, a mad chain coming with a with a lot of speed and a lot of steam. That was turn 11, fastest portion of the race course right here, 11 to 12, and a passing opportunity breaking at turn 12 for Van Gisburg and Larson up to seventh. Larson's got those tires, but he's got a lot of cars to pass in a short amount of time. You see Austin, he's getting in there as hard as he can. He's pushing hard. Kind of locking them up. They're all going wide. Shane's going to be there on the last lap, oh, and he's, he's already there. there. He's already there. But this is not going to be an easy pass for Shane, but you're going to see some of his racecraft definitely come up here. Now, don't you think Shane definitely remembered how the lead just got taken from him? From the back bumper and the front bumper of that 21 car. And I will say, he's done a great job of remaining patient after he lost the lead. Fell from the top spot back to third, but in position to pounce as we circle back to the white flag. It might happen right here into turn one, guys. Yeah, he's right there. Once we get the white flag, the next flag ends the race. One lap to go at Circuit of the Americas. Austin Hill leading Shane Van Gisbergen up to turn one. Austin doing a good job hitting his marks. It's really easy to overdrive the car in this moment. When you see someone right behind you, he's going to be pressuring you. He did a good job of not blowing turn one. Let me tell you something that Shane has been doing a great job all race, all race long is to is to stay on the track. And Larson is coming up in third. He's got those fresher tires. What a rally for the 17. Yeah, the, the, they don't count the 17 as I was someone spun out behind these guys. But this race here is too good to get off of. Oh, my God. They, somebody is wrecking in the back. The 17 has closed the gap tremendously in the last lap from turn 10 to turn 11. Three car battle for the lead. Hill, Van Gisbergen, and Larson. And one of the last chances for, for Sham, Van Gisbergen to make the pass is going to be breaking into turn 12. But Larson's going to be making the move too, and he's got too much distance there. I don't think he can make up that distance in the breaking zone. I think he's going to come in the stadium. I think, I think Shane is going to make his move in the stadium. Larson it, trying to get in there hot. The problem of Shane right now is that he has to play defense and offense at the same time. He's going to be right to him. Watch Kyle Larson turn down underneath him right here. Oh, it comes the bump. Contact. A lot ben of bumps. Gisberg and into Hill. Austin here Hill Larson's goes gonna take it. Larson as well. Here comes Kyle Larson's Larson. going to win it. Kyle oh Larson is sitting God. there waiting for it. Austin Hill is not happy with that. He's going to pay it back a little bit there. Well, I don't know. Austin had one coming. That's how he got the lead. Yeah. Kyle Larson takes over the top spot, and he's going to come back and lead him off a of turn 19 and 20. What a finish at Circuit of the Americas. These two Double done in overtime. Second. Larson from the back to the front. He's going to get it done in Austin, Texas. What a rally. What a rally. Van Gisbergen hangs on and gets second. For Larson, it's career win number 15. Nice drive, Kyle. And the second time he's delivered on the road. Wow. Great, great, great comeback. At the end, Tyrus won the race. I didn't think he, he was going to be able to come back. Great oh, job. And we saw what happened. He was one of the only cars to pit there. He had a, a, a good restart, a caution, another chance at it, and waited for those guys to be beaten with each other and what was able race. to capitalize, just sitting there waiting and took it. Here they go to into turn one. There's a 21 you see on the bottom, pushing Shane down into the corner, getting him out, out of line. Austin Hill wraps the corner nice, takes the lead. Now, if you're Shane, you're a little, yeah. you're a little ticked off after that. So here they are on the last lap. Shane says, no way you're going to win the race. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it takes him out there. And Larson with his tires just said, oh, you guys didn't see yeah. me back here, did you? <laughs> <laughs> that was a great race.
said, Merry Christmas. I'll go to the bottom and take them both. It's great for Kyle Larson, but really cool for Hendrick Motorsports. It's their first win with that 17 in the Xfinity Series. Yeah, and, and we all know how, how this means to, to Mr. Hendrick, you know, to be able to put this pain skin, the 17 car, in, in the Xfinity Series in, in Victory Lane for the first time, actually. And that was Ricky Hendrick's number when he drove in the Craftsman Truck Series. Got his only win with that 17 at Kansas 2001. And the 17 back in Victory Lane today, courtesy of Kyle Larson at Circuit of the Americas. And something I want to point out here, obviously Kyle Larson's an incredible talent. Chad can but That car started last, or in the back, right? One of the cars that had to go to the rear. Look how clean that thing is. Look at Is there any marks on it? Nothing. No. That's incredible. Yeah, oh, he's got he's a chance to make it, doesn't he? <laughs> Someday. <laughs> I think he'll be all right. Let's go to Regan. Kyle Larson starts in the rear today, works his way up to the front of the field. You pit with on lap 44, one of the last yellow flags of the race. Get four tires, find your way back to the front, and you get Hendrick Motorsports, their first win in the Xfinity Series with a 17 car. How does this one feel? Yeah, it, uh, it feels really special because um, I feel like every time we've ran this 17 car, whether it be any of us four drivers, we're always the fastest on the track, and then we somehow give it away. And today I was, I was definitely not the fastest, but... Uh, we were patient. Um, I knew the 21 had shoved uh, SVG through one, so I knew if he got to him, um, you know, could get dicey. And I was just trying to be patient. You know, I, I was thinking when to make my move, and, and thankfully I seen him shoot low through 15 to 16 and shove him. I'm like, all right, this this could get good. And, and just thankfully I cleared him off of that corner. So <clears throat> pretty crazy, but uh, <laughs> just uh, wild, wild there. I, I thought. Um, I thought we pitted, honestly, there'd be more people to pit with us. And then when they didn't, I was like, man, if I can get back to like top 10 here, I'd be okay. But uh, just worked out. So happy, happy that Greg listened uh, to me that my right front was, you know, shot there. I flat spotted it, but um, yeah, really cool. This is uh, this awesome win here at Coda. Kyle Larson wins a wild one at Circuit of the Americas. <laughs> Here with Austin Hill, we saw an absolute battle towards the end of this race between you and SVG. I heard the team on the radio telling you to be calm coming back in. What are the emotions right now as you get out of the car after what happened? Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm frustrated that we just lost the race, but uh, hell of a job by everybody on our Venice Chevrolet. We had such a fast race car all day. Um, I mean, I made a mistake early in the race, cut the racetrack, and then... Uh, had to come back that, from that, and then, uh, you know, the restart, I thought it was somewhat clean. I mean, it seemed like the 97 lifted super early. I don't, I'm not real sure why he lifted so early, and then he started wheel hopping once I got in the back of him into one, and then, uh, you know, we cleared him, and I, I'm trying to run as hard as I can, but not overdrive the corners, and thought I was doing everything right into 15 and 16 there, like trying to protect, and um, ultimately, just you know, got ran over. It knocked his nose in, so it kind of shows how hard he ran into me. But all in all, I mean, our, our Chevrolet was as fast as Xfinity Internet. Um, congrats to Kyle Larson for winning the race. Uh, they had had a good call to come in and get tires there at the end. I didn't know if we were going to make it on fuel, but um, man, I mean, we're we're firing on all cylinders right now. I mean, it doesn't matter where we where we go. Uh, we ran inside the top five finished inside the top five at all, all the races this season. So uh, we got to hold our heads up for that, but uh, really frustrating. Wanted to get that first road course win. Top five streak stays alive for Austin Hill, guys. Yeah, it's been an impressive start to the year. The two wins and another top five, as you said, Josh. Austin Hill has been spectacular through the first five races. So is Shane Van Gisberg and a runner up today, but sixth or better in three of five this year. Unbelievable comeback for Nemechek. Top five on the road for Custer. That's his third straight Top five finish, good day for Kligerman. Jesse Love, the rookie, back-to-back -back top tens. Austin Green, in his debut, is eighth. Chandler Smith, ninth, and Sam Mayer completes the top ten. Here's Josh. Here with SVG, and I was just talking with Austin Hill about the battle you two guys had the end of the race. What happened there from what your, your perspective was? What could you have done different, and will you have a conversation with him? Yeah, I guess so, but... It was a crazy race. We got better and better. Weather Tech Kamara was awesome, and 
yeah, that last restart, he just drove through me at one. So, yeah, I guess that's how it is here. I just stood up for myself, but it was some pretty awesome racing with AJ, Kyle, and then at the end, it just turned into a mess. But that's how it is. It was really fun, but I wish I could have got, uh, got the lead, but Kyle just snuck through there. He was driving really well, but, um, yeah, a lot of fun. Thanks. Cheers. He's happy now, but he's going to be disappointed when he finds out. Penalty for the 97 final lap. Oh. Cutting the course. That'll be 30 seconds because a 30 second penalty because it happened on the final lap. But oh. obviously going to take a tumble when it comes to the final results. Here's what's happening tomorrow on Fox. Our coverage from here at Circuit of the Americas begins 2 Eastern time on FS1 with race day. Over to Fox at 3. And we fire the engines at 3.30 in Austin, Texas. Thank you for watching today. Bowling coming up next. Congratulations, Kyle Larson. He wins it at Coda. So if you wanna go